WABC, New York. Locomotives that haul the nation's passenger and freight trains are inspected regularly at the railroad roundhouse. Experienced men go around the locomotive, making a complete checkup. And in the same sure way, you get around the car checkup for your automobile at your neighborhood Texaco dealer whenever you stop for fire chief gasoline. Texaco dealers call this new service Circle Service, a systematic method of keeping your car in condition for safer, more enjoyable driving. Drive in for a tank full of quick-starting, quick-firing fire chief gasoline and Texaco Circle Service, the new free service that thousands of motorists are enjoying every day. Next time, try a Texaco dealer. And now for your entertainment, the 45,000 Texaco dealers present his honor, the mayor, Eddie Cantor. <laughs> Holiday greetings to you and you and you too, Jimmy. Oh, uh, thank you, Eddie. The same to you. Say, uh, Christmas Day, I saw you out at the Santa Anita racetrack. How did you come out? James, give a description of what I'm wearing, will you? Well, you have a coat. Yes. A vest. Yes. A necktie. Yeah. And no shirt. That's right. <laughs> That's how I came out, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, going out to the track at Santa Anita, coming back at Anita Santa. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but what's the difference? In a couple of days, we'll celebrate the new year. Say, Eddie, you had quite a celebration this year. Your 25th anniversary in show business. That's right. And you still look like a kid. Yeah, that's what I thought till today, when the Chamber of Commerce changed my mind. What happened? On New Year's Day, they want me to put on a nightshirt and parade down Hollywood Boulevard as Father Time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, and uh, don't forget, this past year, the Democrats celebrated their love feast on Jefferson Island. Oh, it was a lovely sight, James. The Democrats were all sitting there eating dinner. Just Democrats? Well, Republicans were there, too. They were the waiters. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Republicans waiting. Yeah, they were waiting for 1940, yeah. <laughs> now I understand... Yes? Now I understand why the Republicans have an elephant for an emblem and the Democrats have a donkey. Why? The Republicans figured that an elephant can go four years without eating and still look healthier than a donkey. <laughs> And next March 15th, the government will celebrate. Celebrate what? My painless method of collecting taxes. Well, how does that work? Well, you get to the tax department, walk into a revolving door, which turns you around and shakes all the money out of your pants pockets. Then an electric arm reaches into your coat, pulls out your wallet, pushes you down a stairway, knocks off your shoes, and you land on a feather carpet. And when you try to stand up, the feathers tickle your feet. And when you open your mouth to laugh, ha <laughs> ha, a government man pulls the gold out of your teeth. <laughs> Jimmy, speaking of celebrations, what about Rubinoff's open-air concert before 225,000 people at Grand Park, Chicago? Brother, that must have been thrilling. Jimmy, it must give everyone a thrill to hear you say once again, Rubinoff and his violin. <laughs> Hello, Rubinoff. Hello, my pal. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jimmy. Well, here we are, just like old times. Nothing has changed. Yeah, but I got a new violin. Yeah, and I got a new baby girl. Yeah, and they both make the same noises, yeah. <laughs> oh, but you can't shut up your violin, Rubinoff, with a bottle of milk. Oh, you're yeah, starting again, are you? Hey, Russian, I understand you talked on the Rudy Valley program. Why didn't you talk when you were with me? <laughs> with you, who's got a chance? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shame. You mustn't lie, Dave. A falsehood never passes my lips. And if you think that isn't hard, you try talking through your nose all day. <laughs> I hear you've got a new Stradivarius. Yes, it's over 200 years old. 200 years old? Yes, Eddie. Like some of your jokes. <laughs> quiet, quiet. They tell me your Stradivarius is positively genuine. No. It's the real thing. Yeah, oh, go away. You don't, you don't even know what genuine is. Who don't? First is December, then January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Why do you insist on showing your ignorance? What's the use of having ignorance if you can't show it? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Rubinoff. Why don't you give us a violin solo? Jimmy, I left my Stradivarius home. Renard, look, will you loan Rubinoff your violin? No. That is my livelihood. And if he will take away my violin, I will be in an awful shape. <laughs> Even if he does not take away your violin, you'll still be in an awful shape. <laughs> Ruben, up. you can't have my violin, and if you don't like it, so lump it. Yep, get away. <laughs> Jack Renard, you insulted him. He was treated royally on the program with Rudy Valley. Well, why put me in the middle? You? Ruben, up's in the middle, between a valley and a mountain. <laughs> I'll tell you, take, take his fiddle, take his fiddle, and play. Will you, Ruben, up? Right for the microphone. I only wish I could be with you on January the 1st when you start your concert tour in Denver. You know, Dave, I want to tell you something. With all the kidding and everything, you know, when you play the violin, you really do something to me? You make me sick. I'm telling you. <laughs> Please, Eddie, I am a real artist of the finest. And here before millions of listeners, I present you with that which you so richly deserve, the Royal Russian Salute. <laughs> Fui! <laughs> <laughs> no kidding No kidding, Dave What can I do to show my appreciation? Say, Eddie Yes Will you ask uh, Diana Durbin to sing that beautiful area from Traviata? You know Diana I mean. Durbin, Traviata Here she is, you bet <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
let's, let's run down to Palm Springs and see how your good humor Springs and Sanatorium are doing. All right, we'll take the Anna with us, Hal. All right, shall we? let's do that. You know, in radio, everything's just around the corner. A little music, a door slam, and here we are in Palm Springs. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> wonderful? It's awful. Look who's coming. Out of my way. Out of my way. The mad Russian. How do you do? <laughs> Eddie Camper, you got to get rid of the head surgeon here. Yeah, but why? First, they took out my appendix that wasn't bad. Yeah. Son, they took out my tonsil that was okie dokie. But yesterday, they took out my wife, Snugger. <laughs> I don't blame your wife. Looking at you would upset anyone. You should talk, weasel puss. <laughs> I can't look on your face. Yeah, what's wrong with my face? Don't ask me. I'm a doctor, not a plastic surgeon. Yep, Why? <laughs> Get out. I'm taking charge here. No, but I'm a big hospital man. I was three years in John Hopkins. Yes. Five years in the Mayo Brothers. Yes. And six years in Bellevue Hospital. Now, what happened? None of them could cure me. <laughs> if you want to prove you're a doctor, show me the x-ray picture you took last week of my brain. I can't show it to you. It needs developing. The picture? No, your brain. <laughs> you're no doctor. You're really a dope. This let me examine you. Aha! Uh-huh. You got quite a big lump on your hip. Yeah? I'd be very happy to remove it. Lump on my hip? Why, that's my wallet. I'll still be happy to remove it. Hey, wait a minute, give me a Here you are. Okay, I'll tell you. Do you know what this wallet contains? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll take it, I'll take it. Hello? What? I'll ask the doctor. Say Russian. It's the patient in 205. Do you know what his temperature is? Sure, it's 105 in the shade. 105 in the shade? Yes, we didn't have a blanket, so we wrapped him in a shade. A window shade. <laughs> <laughs> he must be very ill. I'll operate immediately. The doctor says he'll be right up. Now, you better hurry and boil all the instruments. I'll save time. How? I'll boil the patient. You, wait a minute, you can't do that. That's the finish. Get out. You're driving my patients crazy. The patients are driving me crazy. Look at this woman and her boy. Oh, Mr. Cantor, I'm so glad you're here. My boy, Earl, needs a change. Maybe he's too, too big for his height. Yeah, maybe he's too fat for his weight. Maybe he's too old for his age. Yeah. He's no good. Trade him in for a grasshopper. Wait a minute. What's the matter with you? What's wrong with your boy, madam? My little Earl is mean and nasty, and I want you to change him. Madam, you'll have to go to a Texaco station to change your Earl. Oh! <laughs> That's very funny. That's very funny. <laughs> you pop-eyed weasel. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, sticks and stones can break my bones, but names can never hurt me. There. A name hurt me once. A name hurt... What name? Coca-Cola, the sign fell on my head. <laughs> it didn't fall hard enough. Wait, here comes another patient. Yes, mister? Oh, Mr. Cantor, this is a wonderful place. Oh, I've been living here like a king. You like it here? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I don't ever want to leave $25 a day, <laughs> but it's worth 50 mm. He's very happy. He's very happy. Yeah, tell me, did you drink the good humor water? <laughs> yes. And am I happy? Nothing could upset me. Well, I feel great myself. <laughs> Nothing could make me mad either. Oh, I'm so glad. Why? Because <laughs> I owe a month's rent and I have no money to pay you. <laughs> you <win. laughs> Oh, this place is too much for me. Between you and the patients, I'm going crazy. Why don't you leave? Me, a specialist? Specialist? What's your specialty? Taking out appendix. Oh, sure. How do you take out the appendix? Very simple, very simple. You see, the patient opens the mouth, and I take out two small things in the throat. Why, you dope, that's the tonsils. Oh, I take out tonsils, too? <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to pack my things and get out. Why? How did you guess? You want to know? Yes, I want to know. <clears throat> Shall I tell her? <laughs> yes. How did you find out I wanted you to pack and get out? You reading my mind? No, I'm reading your script. <laughs> <laughs> what a doctor. What a sanatorium. The patients are crazy. Germs all over the place. Germs? Say, I'm a doctor. You'll have to explain what means germs. Why, germs? Germs are little crawling things that live off of people. How do you do? I... <laughs> Before you step on the start of these bitter cold days, your engine is lifeless, ice cold. Right next to it, in the carburetor, is a small cup full of gasoline that's supposed to put life, fire, and power into the engine at an instant's notice. That's no job for an ordinary gasoline. 
No job full of gasoline that depends on the battery to do its work. What you need these winter months is Texaco Fire Chief, the emergency duty type gasoline, available in all 48 states. Millions of car owners switched to Fire Chief when it was first announced. And every winter since, more and more motorists have used Fire Chief exclusively. Fire Chief starts them off even on coldest days in less than 10 turns of the motor. Follow the lead of the nation's thrifty winter drivers. Get quicker starts. Save money on gas. Next time, try a Texaco dealer. Say, say Eddie, uh, what happened to our guest stars, Alice Faye and Tony Martin? Well, Jimmy, Alice is on the way over. Look, look, here's Tony Martin now. Tony, I'm certainly glad you're here tonight. Well, I should be here every Wednesday night, Eddie. Why? Because I can do so many things. I can do an announcer, a singer, a comedian. Well, stop. Joke. Wait a minute. Pretty soon you'll tell me you can do a sponsor. Why not? You've been doing them for years. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Quiet, Tony. You know, I was really surprised when you married Alice three months ago. It all happened so suddenly. Well, I'll tell you, Eddie, that's because I didn't want to waste any time. Yeah. I just kissed her once and she was mine. I see. Just one kiss from you and... That's this Alice. Oh. Oh, Tony Martin, the ladies' man, eh? Not so loud, James. Here comes Alice Faye. Come in, Alice. <laughs> you know, it's so good to have you here, Alice. Oh, thank you, Eddie. How come you got here so late tonight? Working overtime at the studio? Yes. You know, some pictures are easy, but... You don't know how hard it is working for Sally, Irene, and Mary. Well, I don't know about Sally, Irene, and Mary, but I know how hard it is working for Ida, Janet, Marilyn, Edna, Natalie, and Marjorie. <laughs> Wait a minute, did I leave out anybody? <laughs> oh, Jack Renard, come here. I want you to meet our guest stars, Alice Faye and Tony Martin. I'm glad to meet the both of you. Mm, thank you. We're glad to meet the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alice... I've asked Daryl Zanuck to make you my next leading lady. Oh, Eddie, you're a darling. I think I'm going to kiss you. Oh, oh, wait, 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 hey, wait, wait a minute. Wait, Remember wait. me? I uh, came with the... Yeah, well, you know, you know, Alice Faye and Love and War. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> my, you know, you know, that kiss was very nice. You know, I don't think Ida kisses as well as you do. No wonder. Look what she's got to practice on. <laughs> Well, just for that, I'm going to let Renard practice on you and Tony. Play, Jack, if you will. <clears throat> like the beating feet of the tom-tom When the jungle shadows fall Like the tick-tick-tock of the stately clock As it stands against the wall like the drip, drip, drip of the raindrop When the sun falls through A voice within me keeps repeating You, you, you Night and day You are the one Only you beneath the moon Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are. I think of you night and day, day and night. Oh, why is it so that this longing for you follows wherever I go? My lonely room, I think of you night and day, night and day, under the heart of me, there's an old such a hungry yearning burning inside of me, and it's torment won't be through till you let me spend my life making love to you day and night night and day Alice Alice 
Now, Betts Tony has an answer to night and day. Listen. That was a grand bit of singing. Oh, thanks, Eddie. You know, I kind of miss hearing the duet you and Tony sang on the Grape Nuts program for Burns and Allen. I wish to... Your wish is my command. Music, (laughs) Renard. You're gonna lose your gal. You don't know who's your gal. Acting like a two-time lover. Keeping kisses undercover. You'll wake up and soon discover... You're gonna lose your gas, you're gonna fall away You're gonna get that way How can you be so conceited? Take a heart and then mistreat it You can't have your cake and eat it You're gonna lose your gal, and when she's gone She won't come back They don't come back, won't come back Once they're gone You're gonna be surprised You never realize Someone else can treat her nicer. Someone else can shoes and write her. Someone else will paradise her. You're gonna lose your alley, yeah, man, but you're gonna lose your Ida. You're gonna lose your gal. Thank you. Thanks, Alice and Tony, and a happy new year to both of you. Time, New Year's Eve. The scene, a hospital in the nation's capital. Hello? Hello, Dr. Cantor speaking. This is the National Recovery Hospital, yes? Yes, I'll take care of it immediately. But, Dr. Cantor, I thought we were going to celebrate the New Year tonight. I can't leave, James. We have an emergency case tonight, and I'm waiting for the chief surgeon. Gee, it must be a pretty important patient. Who's sick? It's Uncle Sam's wife. 
Mrs. America. Yeah. See that man walking up and down with the red striped trousers, the long white chin whiskers, and the tall hat with stars? Why, it's Uncle Sam. And is he nervous, like any father? I can appreciate it. Say, I don't get this. Uncle Sam is expecting a newcomer. It can't be a boy or a girl. Could it be a new state? No, no, no. They're expecting a new year. Oh, new I get year. it. The birth of 1938. Look, Uncle Sam wants to talk to you. Uh, how are you, Uncle? I'm worried, Doctor. I'm afraid my wife hasn't the strength to pull through. Don't forget, we've had some pretty sickly children, 1930, 31, and 32. Yes, but listen, in a, in a family as big as yours, this is going to be 161st. There are bound to be a few weak sisters, but I'm sure 1938 will be a real chip off the old block. Well, I wish I could share your optimism. Why not, Uncle Sam? I know you and your wife have been through a lot. But don't worry. Every time Mrs. America has been in trouble, some great doctor has come along to save the day. Remember in 1776, when Mrs. America was still young? That was her first child, you know. We never thought she would survive. A young physician, Dr. George Washington, took charge. It was his first case, too. He turned out to be a doctor of genius. I remember. He was a great doctor. And remember, too, in 1861, when Mrs. America was probably in the most critical condition of her life... All the professors gave her up when a thin, lanky doctor came out of a small log cabin in the West. Everyone said it was a case of saving the mother or the child, but he did more. He saved them both. Dr. Abe Lincoln? I'll never forget him. Oh, Dr. Cantor, Dr. Cantor, you must do something at once. The patient is in a very serious condition. Oh, well, the chief surgeon is here. That's him entering the patient's room now. He got here just in time. It's getting nearer and nearer 12 o'clock. Oh, I hope we're not going to have a bad year. She never would be able to live through it. Uncle, I've never seen you like this before. Buck up. It's getting near midnight. How quiet everything is. Oh, I'm so worried. Oh, she'll pull through. I know it. It'll be all right. I just know it will. Listen. <laughs> Hooray! 1938 is here. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I told you, Uncle. Oh, I'm so relieved. Uncle Sam, it's a lovely child. Tell me, how is the mother? The mother is fine, and the baby is a bouncing happy new year if ever there was one. Oh, Dr. Cantor, I'm proud of my lovely child. Uncle Sam, let's celebrate. We'll give a party and invite 125 million people to the christening of our happy new year. The greatest party we ever had. Not just Republican or Democrat, but an all-American party. I'm really happy. Now my wife and I have nothing more to worry about. That's right. Mr. and Mrs. America, 1938 is your baby to look after, nurse it, build it up, help make it the most wonderful year you ever had. And to everyone listening, I say, this would truly be a happy new year if the heads of nations would think about hands across the sea instead of arms. <laughs> is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Nine PM B U L O V A Boulevard Watch Time. W A B C New York.